Hey everyone, how's it going? This is going to be a comprehensive guide on how to use FlickStick. Uh, we're going to be talking about how to set it up, best practices, and really just give a feel for how you should be going about trying this out. Because uh, it can be pretty unnatural when you try it. It's a, it's a bit of a, of a, a difficult thing to get used to, especially when you're so used to the normal joystick uh, movement. So I, when I initially started, I looked up a bunch of videos, and most of the videos I'm seeing on YouTube are just showing how to set it up, and then that's where the video usually ends. There might be some gameplay of them using it, but uh, you know you kind of have to watch what they're doing and try to suss out like you know what the thought process is. And for me, you know whether you're doing it correctly or incorrectly it doesn't matter you still feel like you're doing something wrong because of how unnatural it feels right you feel like this isn't how it's supposed to work so aside from just helping you guys set up I also wanted to walk you through how I use it personally and sort of my like order of operations and give you better feel of, you know a starting point that you can work on and then of course you can you know develop your own ways of, of how you want to use it so yeah let's get into it all right so the game we're going to be checking out today for uh setting up flick stick is going to be halo infinite uh i really like this game because it's free to download uh it runs great on the deck and uh as we get into it they have a great training mode that will let you be invincible set infinite ammo uh turn off bots completely so you can do the setup without any distractions and then you can actually control uh you can set the difficulty of the bot's movement independent from their overall difficulty. So you can work your way up uh, skill-wise while you're getting used to it by making their movement more erratic and hard to track. Okay, so here we are in the training mode. And first thing I want to do is turn off the bots while we get set up. Now, one thing I want to know about setting up FlickStick is that I am currently using the beta branch of the SteamOS, which has a lot more expanded features and settings to tweak for uh, FlickStick. So if you're using an older version, um, either switch to beta or if you want to wait for a stable branch, then just wait and check out this video when the new settings drop in the stable branch. So what FlickStick is, is it turns your right stick into a completely horizontal 360 degree movement like that and by going to the edge and sweeping around you can smoothly turn the camera like that you can also flick to different uh, degrees that you want uh, to use this you incorporate gyro to take care of your vertical movement as well as some horizontal uh, when I first heard about this feature, uh, they made it sound like gyro was only for vertical aiming and this was for horizontal, and that's just awful. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm glad I figured out that you also need to use some horizontal movement in there as well. Alright, so to get started, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a map and I'm just going to line up my crosshair on something you know vertical and straight like the corner of this entryway uh, and I'm gonna use that as my starting point so let's hop into our steam settings and let's edit our layout we go to joystick and we set the flick stick one thing we want to do also is turn off gyro so it's not getting in the way of our calibration and here are all of the settings these are the new settings that are currently in the beta branch so first off, we have our sensitivity. This is what we adjust to make sure that our joystick is a perfect 360. We're not undershooting or overshooting. Uh, then we have the sweep sensitivity. So when you're sweeping, you know, one full 360 will be, you know, one 360. Or you could increase it to be multiple or less. Your rotation offset is all about, because our thumb is on the lower right, sometimes we're not perfectly, you know, up, down, left, right. Sometimes it's a little, sometimes my left and right looks like this, you know, that's not straight. It's a little canted. So we can use this 
to sort of rotate what forward and back is a little bit. It's a useful feature. Snapping uh, is all about is there any snapping at all and how much. So we can have 180 degrees, we can have 90 degrees, we can have sixths, which is, you know, forward, back, and then four diagonals. And we have eighths, which is, you know, forward, back, left, right, and then four diagonals. Uh, and of course, you can have no snapping. So you can have all 360 individual degrees available to snap at any given time, right? Smoothing, uh, so your flick stick or your flick turn tightness, um, when you do a quick turn, it's all about how instant is that and or how smooth it is. So when you're first starting out, it can be really disorienting to have it so instant. Uh, I recommend setting it to be pretty low uh, and smooth so that you can see where the camera goes from point A to point B and you don't get so turned around. Uh, same with sweep tightness. This is like how responsive the camera is when you're sweeping around uh, not doing flicks. Uh, so it can be really kind of sensitive and feel pretty quick like mouse movement or it can be more smoothed out and have a, it's more visually appealing when it's smoothed out but it can be less responsive, you know. The release dampening speed is when you, when you flick, when you go to the edge of uh, your joystick to flick and you come back, that traveling back could do some sweeping. It could do some camera movement left and right. Um, so this, what this does is it just sets, you know, it turns off the sweeping when the stick's coming back at certain speeds. And I always run this at the, um, the lowest setting possible, which is 0.125, uh, because I don't want accidental sweeping when the sticks return to center. And then dead zones, the dead zones are uh, a little complicated. Um, really the outer dead zone is what really kind of starts the turning. Um, and they recommend setting this to high because the further out your stick is when it calculates that angle that you're gonna use, the more accurate it is, right? So if you have a really small dead zone and you try to flick in a direction, it's going to be a little less accurate with what direction it thinks you want to go, right? Um, and then outer ring, that's uh, super relevant. So those are your settings. Uh, let's get started with getting our calibration set up. So what I want you to do is set the snapping to 90 degrees. And I want you to set the release dampening speed to zero. This is going to turn off sweeping entirely. So there's not going to be any accidental left-right movement that's gonna make it look like our calibration is off. Then I want you to set whatever dead zone you have, set them both to be equal. So it's just one hard and fast dead zone. And I'm gonna change my thing to be wrong because mine's already set up. And we should be good to go. So we've got gyro turned off, we've got 90 degree snapping, and then we're looking at this corner of the of the wall right so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit right and that should be a 90 another right another right and you can see we're clearly undershooting because it should only take four turns to get back to center so how we do that is we just go back to sensitivity and we just keep adjusting it until it's correct uh, you could overshoot it so one two three four we overshot it and so that's all you do you just fine-tune these settings until they're right for the sensitivity that's in game and i know for my sensitivity in game my number is five three three four so with that all set up we've got 190 another 90 and then we're back to center and we can keep doing this and it's absolutely perfect. Now, you don't have to do this absolute perfect calibration. You can get in the ballpark. I'm just a very anal person, so this method really lets you get it perfect. And with that, your flick stick is pretty much set up. Now we can just go back to settings, go back to joystick, and we can set things how we want them.
no snapping, forward only. Set this back to something other than zero. Set dead zones back. All right. So real quick before we move on to actually using it in practice and what's the best way, um, I want to go over my settings just in case people out there feel the need to copy them and explain why I have them the way I do. Um, so sensitivity is how it has to be for it to be at 360. The sweep sensitivity I like to be at 1x because it just it makes sense to me to have, you know, that's 180. It's just a full circle. It's no more, no less. It's one to one. Um, this can feel pretty jumpy at first because the camera, even if your thumb just, you know, slips a little bit, it can move a lot. And I was definitely tempted to, you know, take the setting down a bit. But I think if you can just get used to it, I think it's better to have it at 1x. And rotation offset, that's just something for feel, you know. So for the dead zones, they recommend keeping them high. And the reason they do this is that they can more accurately calculate what angle you're trying to press. Um, because by the time you're all the way to the edge of the thumbstick, it has a good idea what angle you're going for. Whereas if you keep it really tight, um, it might not be as reliable. The reason I keep mine so small is because it just feels responsive. It, you know, when I have a thought in my head to move the camera and I'm moving and moving and moving and then is when it happens, it's just too long. You know, I want the game to react as quickly as I think it, and so I prefer having a small dead zone. The problem with that is that, like I said, it does make your angles less reliable. Um, so what I normally do is I actually like using the eights snapping. So that gives me, you know, back, it gives me 90 degree left and right, and it gives me four diagonals. And I find that's really all that I need uh, in gameplay just to get me around because the aiming is done with the gyro and flick sticks really just about get you, getting you in an orientation quickly um, so making up for the lack of accuracy with a small dead zone I make up for it with uh, eights snap angle all of the smoothing settings are just up to your personal preference there's not really going to be a um, muscle memory factor in this uh, it's just a visual thing, so you might want it more instant or more smooth. It's up to you. All right, for my gyro settings, let's go ahead and turn this back on as mouse. And, you know, these are settings that I found that I like personally. Um, it's something you're going to have to play around with. You know, I would say, in my opinion, give yourself a good bit of horizontal movement. I mean, you, you want to be able to track a target you know, and not, it, it's always kind of wonky to try to continue a target with the flick stick, if that makes sense. To be like halfway and you're running out of room and you use the flick stick. So you want enough gyro that, you know, if you're circling somebody, you can smoothly just keep shooting and shooting and shooting and, and you know, being able to hit them. And then you want your vertical sensitivity to obviously be able to f cover the full range because you have no other means a vertical movement it's just gyro so make sure your vertical is how you like it I like no smoothing smoothing looks a little nicer I guess but it uh, makes it feel like there's more input lag you know it feels just a little floatier rather than snappy so it's a bit harder to do flicks with smoothing turned on um, I'm sure you could do a little bit and it wouldn't impact it but definitely 20 is too much Gyro, I like combine yaw and roll. I'll talk about that in a little bit. And trigger dampening, I have trigger dampening off. For me, I feel like trigger dampening is almost kind of like training wheels in a sense. Um, you can definitely, when you get started, just like be a little overzealous with your trigger pulling and it messes up your aim. I find that if you can just work on improving yourself and keeping your hands steady when pulling the trigger, um, it's better because what I find is I fine-tune my gyro to be exactly how I want it and then while I'm shooting because of the dampening it's lowering my sensitivity and it's lowering it to something I wasn't used to if that makes sense 
So I find that I'm I'm constantly chasing targets and I never feel like I'm catching up with them. And the reason for that is the trigger dampening is slowing down my gyro um, to to you know settings that I'm not used to when I'm when I'm not shooting because when the trigger is being pulled, it's slowing it down. So I think it's better to leave it off if you can just train yourself to you know you can pull the trigger without moving the deck too much. So those are my settings, and let's get into actually running around and using it. All right, so we are in. We've got our gyro turned back on. There's a little look at how sensitive mine is. Um, it can be pretty sensitive here in the middle, you know. It's really up to you to keep it steady. Um, so what I'm going to do in the training mode is I'm going to turn on infinite ammo. I'm going to turn on deathless. And I'm going to turn the bots back on so we can run around and just mess around with it. So generally speaking, I use sweep most of the time. Just for my little turns around the map like that. Um, I don't really like snap constantly like that. Um, sometimes I'll snap when I'm approaching like a 90 degree like this. Do something like that. Now I actually have to look around my camera at the screen and try to get stuff done. Um, You may notice sometimes that I use sweeping to do a 180 instead of flicking 180, and I don't know why I do that. I just started doing it, and it's just like a thing I do, like there. I just, I don't know. I, I kind of just like sweeping it. I think because my dead zone is so low, it's a very small movement. I can just do a half circle and whip around. And, uh, yeah, I'm not sure why I do that. So one thing I don't do when I'm using FlickStick is I don't use the sweep to track targets. It's just a little, it's just a little too sensitive. If you wanted to set your sweep to be lower sensitivity, and then you would have to do multiple round trips to even do one full 360, it'd probably be better for that use case. What I really try to do is I just try to use the FlickStick to get me in the area, and then it's just full on gyro to track targets so real quick let me talk about um, another gyro setting as far as the horizontal movement goes just something I want to touch on so obviously this is pitch this is roll this is the expected um, result for for roll and then there's yaw which is kind of not what you expect. If you imagine holding your phone camera, this is not what this motion produces. It's a little weird. Um, and I used to just run that off, you know, just run roll and not do the combined yaw and roll. The reason why I now have them both combined, like they are in default, is that's really handy when you're running out of room. You know, say that's my max, say like, it's uncomfortable to turn any further, but this dude is still circling me. He's going behind me. Um, it helps you to get that extra bit because now you have this extra motion. You can almost do a 360, right? So eventually when you do this, you're like, you can't even see the screen. So you turn the way that's comfortable. And if you're still in that fight and you still haven't finished it, you can start arching your hand up and then finish it and then go back to what you're doing. Um, I haven't had to do that too many times, but having that turned on means that in a situation I wasn't prepared for where they're actually just keep going around me, I haven't finished them, I get that extra, it gives you extra sensitivity 
if you think about it that way. It gives you that little extra bit. Because um, it's always going to be hard to track somebody and then stop and continue and then stop and continue. It's also going to be hard to track somebody and try to like do flick stick stuff. It's just always easier to use gyro when possible. So I like that option. So while I'm running around here, there's a few things I wanted to show you. Uh, some exercises that you can work on with FlickStick that will come in handy for you. So obviously, if you're running along, you get shot in the back. You can do a, a 180 and start, you know, coming their way and returning fire, right? Sometimes you just want to check behind you um, while keeping your same direction, or you're getting shot from behind and you want to keep the same direction. So to do that, you just want to... Uh, Pull the right stick down and the left stick down at the same time. So now you've done a 180 and you're moving backwards. And then to return, you just alternate. So 180 and you move the stick up and down so that you're keeping your direction the whole time. So that's one thing that comes in handy. Um, I was playing some uh, Call of Duty Zombies and that comes in real handy when you're being chased by a horde. Sometimes you need to run, look back while still moving and shooting. And so just getting that muscle memory down comes in real handy. The other thing I want to talk about is doing a quick check left and right. With normal thumbstick movement, you would just move the stick to the left, move it to the right, and that would be your check. Uh, for flick stick, if I wanted to look left and right here, and I went left and then right, I would be back at front. What you actually want to train yourself to do is go left, 180 backwards, and then left again. So that's how you check left, right, back to front left, right, back to front. And the same for right, you would go right, back, and then right again. So just doing that a couple times and just getting used to that sort of weird movement you're not used to will help you to do quick checks. I usually do stuff like that with a sweep. That works too. All right, so now I'm gonna hop out of train mode. I'm gonna hop into a custom match with uh, bots and just start doing some gameplay and I'm going to try to commentate over um, anything that jumps out at me that I'm doing and try to <laughs> try to point those things out if I can. It's going to be difficult multitasking trying to look around this camera while also um, putting on a good <laughs> show and not missing all my shots um, but I'll do my best. Alright so here we go we're playing some control points on streets and I'm just gonna try to actually play this around my camera, just point out anything that I'm doing. So like usual, I like using the sweep to do my turning. Oh, there's one right there. Oh, there's a guy behind me. Um, sometimes I do use gyro to make, make a slight turn. Probably shouldn't though. Usually gets me in trouble when I do that. I just remembered something I actually want to touch on, which is that um, this is a bad habit that I have that you may not have, but uh, it's important to look out for these things and try to work on them. Um, when I'm shooting someone high up, so this is my neutral, right? You always want your um, center look to be in a comfortable position. And of course, when you're looking up, this isn't how you normally play. Uh, when I'm shooting someone and I, you know, finish him, um, I usually, you know, reload and I return my hands to center, but I'm still looking up. So now I have to look down, come off gyro, come up to neutral, and then come back on to gyro. Um, and that's something I'm, I'm trying to work on. So, you know, if you're doing basically any time that you're going up or down, even horizontally, try to return back to your neutral position before you let go to press a button or something. Or better yet, set something to your back buttons like the, like the reload. All right, let's get into it. Oh. Um, this is not my ideal 
situation, resting my arms on a desk, just to let you know. <laughs> I usually play in bed with my elbows um, resting like on either side of me, with my arms up in the air. And that's pretty comfortable for me. I, I feel like my range of motion is limited resting on a desk. Alright, let's go look for some fights. Uh, dude. All right. So there I did good, even though, see, I still want to press X to reload even though it's on the back button, but at least there I returned to center before I did it. So that's good. And again, I like to do sweeps for 180s for some reason. I don't know how that started. I just noticed it partway through, and it's just something I do. I think I only flick 180 if I'm actually being shot behind. But this game is running really well in the deck. The only thing you, you want to make sure you do is that you set the minimum frame rate to 60, and it will dynamically scale the resolution to uh, keep that frame rate. And it does a really good job. Most games, you know, that's the whole appeal of the dynamic res is like, we'll keep this resolution for you and we'll scale the, or we'll keep this frame rate and we'll scale the resolution, but they just don't do that. You will still lag even when you turn that setting on. But Halo's implementation is really solid. If you set the minimum to 60, I mean, you get a pretty much locked 60. Uh, if I ran this natively, it'd be like, 45, low 50s. Another thing is, um, it's good to have your um, frame rate uncapped. It just makes, even at 60, 60 has pretty low input lag, but having it uncapped and limiting it from within the game just makes the dry roll a lot snappier. Just, it feels better. And I apologize for the uh, quality of this footage, but I am... I am running the camera at 60 FPS, so it makes the quality look worse. Yep, there I go, sweeping 180 again. Sometimes I keep looking up at my monitor that's showing me the camera feedback, but it's running at 30 FPS and it's not good. So I gotta remember to look at the screen. Yeah, it just feels really nice to be able to sweep around constantly like this. And uh, I've been paying attention to how much I actually flick, but uh, it's just handy to have these options. If you want to flick all the time, you can do that.
so yeah, that's FlickStick. Um, I'm really in love with the control scheme. I think it's a lot better way to control FPS games than traditional thumbstick movement. And yeah, this is just sort of how I go about using it. And you know, I'm not sure if there really even is the right way, you know, per scenario, when to flick or when to sweep or when to gyro. But you know, this should at least give you a starting point to play around with. But like I said, it's really a natural feeling at first, but if you stick with it, it will start to click. You know, one of the downsides that I always think about flick stick is that it's not how I'm going to want to play every game, right? You know, I'm not going to play Spider-Man Remastered with flick stick. I'm not going to play God of War with flick stick. Um, I might not even play Sea of Thieves, which is first person like that, you know, because it's more of a chill game. Um, but of course, running into other pirates who are playing on PC and are really good, you kind of want flick stick. So it, it can be kind of a hard proposition to tell yourself that you're going to have to uh, switch between um, like two modes. But what I can say from trying it just the past week is that, you know, if you stick with it, once the wires in your brain are connected, once they're there, and it starts to click for you, um, it's a lot easier to flip a switch and go between the two modes. It's not as confusing. The reason I stuck with it is just because I saw so many people talking about it, and it just felt like I was kind of missing out on something great, like, you know, and I couldn't quite get it. You know, I tried it. I would try it for a whole night, and at the end of the night, I would just go, yeah, I just think it's just not for me. I, I'm just better at the old way and I would put it down for you know like a month and when I would come back to it you know this this most recent time when I really just forced myself to like keep doing it eventually you know the wires in my brain got connected and it clicked and uh, now it makes a whole lot more sense and the game's randomly lagging and, you know one thing about Halo is that you know I don't actually like driving the cars with flick stick because it's Flick stick's really more of a aiming type situation, and the vehicles in this game, you don't steer left and right, you only move forward and you steer with the camera. Um, so what I do is, I have uh, up on my trackpad, what it does is it holds down X to enter a vehicle and then it switches my joystick back to normal. So now I'm in normal joystick movement, and I can tell you, after only a week of messing around with flick stick that I can play a game and flip a switch, drive a vehicle, and then press that button to hop out, and I'm back to fli uh, flick stick. And it's just it's just a switch in your brain that you just flip back and forth from. So yeah, give it a shot, and uh, I have an extra tip at the end of the video, uh, which is probably right now, I guess. So one thing I want to leave you guys with is a quick trick to help you keep consistent settings between all of your uh, FPS games. So what I mean by that is, you know, when I would play FPS games on PC with the mouse, right, there is a trick that people use um, where you take your given amount of mouse space and, you know, they say you start from the center and all the way to the right should be a 180 and then all the way from right to left should be a 360 and that's how you calibrate, you know, at least a good starting point for a new FPS game that you download. Adjust the sensitivity so that from center to right is 180 and from all the way right to all the way left is 360. Um, when you're when it comes to gyro, there's really no good way to you know suss out your settings. I mean, if I say that's 90 degrees, how can I replicate that with my hand? Like it's it's going to be really hard to replicate exact gyro settings when you enter another game. You can try to get it close, but once you built up a muscle memory, you know, you're always going to kind of have this feeling that things are off. And I'm definitely that type of person that notices. Uh, recently in my car, um, I had the seat set up a certain way. I got in the car and turned it on, and everything just reset. The chair moved back to its default position, and I spent over an hour fiddling with the, all the different seat options to try to get it the way it was. And that kind of stuff just irritates me. So here's how I go about doing that for gyro. 
So here we are in the Halo Infinite um, flick stick settings that I've set up. And so you can see right here my sensitivity is uh, 5334, and that's been set up in relation to the um, in-game sensitivity that Halo was set to. So obviously if I start changing the in-game sensitivity, this would be out of whack and it would no longer be a perfect 360, right? So if we copy all of our flick stick settings to a new game, this 5334 is not going to work anymore because it's going to have different sensitivity. Um, and you would probably think to just come into Steam and tweak this value until it works. Um, but what I found is that um, if one flick stick setting works for one game, the same as it does in another, then that means that your gyro settings for one game will work exactly the same in one game as they do in another. So what I do is when I, uh, you know, Halo Infinite was the testing grounds is where I um, developed the settings that I like to use. And what I do from there on is I copy my gyro settings completely and I copy my flick stick settings completely to the new game. And obviously the flick stick is going to be out of whack. But rather than tuning it here, what I do is I tune it inside the game as close as I can. Because most in-game sensitivity uh, bars, um, they either go from like 1 to 2 to 3, or they might have a decimal 1.1, 1.2, and maybe sometimes they have two decimal places. Um, but the bottom line is, is it's not as fine-tuned as it is in Steam. It, you can get extremely fine-tuned uh, in the Steam settings here. So what you do is you copy your exact settings and you try to get it as close as you can with the in-game sensitivity so that this number works. So if your number was 5334, try to change each game's in-game sensitivity so that 5334 works. And then it's not going to happen. You're, you can get close and then you can just slightly tweak this one until it's perfect. But what that does is, because all the games are now so identical in their sensitivity and how Steam looks at them, that means that automatically, without changing things, your gyro should be good to go. And you don't have to worry about, you know, my gyro feels more sensitive in this game than the other and it throws me off and whatnot. It's, yeah, it's more like a guarantee it's going to work correctly. So that's my last little tip. I hope this video was helpful. Um, helping you uh, get set up with the new settings and giving you an idea of how you can go about getting used to it. I uh, hope you guys give it a good shot and try to stick with it, and I hope it helps you in your playing FPS games. Thanks.